and welcome to another edition of Office Hours here with Mr. Carbonaro. Hi, uh, this is Nick Carbonaro. You can find me at NJ Carbonaro on Twitter. You could uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which you're watching right now, at Professor Carbonaro, at Professor Nick Carbonaro, and uh, email me at ncarbonaro at ldcc.edu. So we are in week 14, I believe. We got three full weeks of school left and then that one half week where graduation is. So we are coming down to the end. We're coming down to the wire and I want us all to really uh, make sure that we're focused in, we're hunkered down and we're really looking to, to maximize our, um, our time remaining in class. So uh, let's let's kind of break stuff down for this week um, we'll start with my online class since my online people are usually the ones that are watching this live stream um, this week in online well we just got done with chapter 15 I believe so we are going to be doing chapter 16 which is bonds now bonds are a little bit different than stocks bonds are essentially an IOU meaning you where stocks are equity bond is considered debt to a company and so equity financing would be you know issuing an IPO and doing all the stock stuff that we learned in the last uh, the last couple modules in chapters uh, 15 and 14 but bonds are a different story bonds are IOU so companies or governments can issue them there's a finite amount of them, so it's an actual certificate, it's an actual bond. There's a piece of paper that, that represents that bond. <clears throat> and what it does is, it's an IOU. So you go to the company and you give them a certain amount of money and they promise you that at the end of the maturity, when that, when that bond is to fulfillment, when it, when it matures out, you will not only get your money back, but you'll get you know the interest earned and those interest, um, instead of being dividends, you know, they're your, they're your coupon payments and you have your coupon rate and it's different stuff. It may be a little tricky if you're not used to thinking the backwards way, meaning you may only think about it in stocks, but uh, with bonds it's a little, uh, it's the other way. You're, I, you're owing the company. So when the company has you as a bondholder, they owe you money at some point and you could collect it at any time. Now, yes, there's certain you know penalties maybe. Uh, you won't feel the whole bond to maturity, so you actually will lose money, but um, overall, it's a very, very, very safe bet. That's why bond interest rates are very low compared to the stock ones, which we talked about um, last class uh, or last uh, last module. But uh, where the market's returning in average, I shared my class the other day. I think from 1928 to 2000, 1938, 1928 to 2015 is the most current data. The the stock market has grown. 11%. So if you would have just bet the market, um, if you had just uh, bet on the Dow Jones, you would have made an 11% growth compared to bonds, which were like net minus inflation, it's about 3%. So about 5% growth with 3% or 3% growth. And then with inflation included, it was like 2 or 1%. So um, it's a huge, it's a huge difference. It's a huge risk to be in a stock, but the bonds are very safe. Yes, they have risky standards. I mean, we talk about uh, credit ratings and, and all that type of stuff. But if you want to watch a good movie about bonds and kind of understand bonds, and you probably have to watch it a, a few times before you fully understand it, is The Big Short with um, with Brad Pitt and Steve Carell. Talk about the housing crisis because the housing crisis was a bet on the bonds. It was a bet on the bond market that the bond market would fall. So they shorted the stock. It's the things that we talked about in... Um, they shorted the bond. The things that we talked about in chapter 15 of buying on margin bar, buying on margin and, and, and short selling and all that type of stuff, they decided to short sell. Short sell is where you uh, you buy a, you, you sell a borrowed fund. So in the movie Christian Bale, you'll see him calculating up a whiteboard and he's showing how negative they were in because what he was doing was he was purchasing the bonds and they weren't losing value. They were going up and up and up. And for him to make money off of it, he needed them to lose value so he could sell it because he already he 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 already sold. He needed to rebuy that st that bond back. And so short selling very very confusing to talk about it like this. But 
basically what he did was he took bonds that he didn't own, sold them, and then at some point he has to buy them back so he can give them to the original owner. Well, if he sold them at $30 a share, let's say, and the price rose to $60 a share, well, he has to buy that back at some point. He just can't say, oh, if it's too high, I can't buy it back. No, you have to buy it back. So if he would have bought it back at 60 bucks, he would have lost $30 on that. And so um, that's what that board, if you're watching the movie, there's a whiteboard where he keeps erasing the, the percentage sign and, and showing it in the negative, and it keeps going down because the bond price keeps going up. And so what he does is he then, when the market crashes, they sell, and then he has a huge gain because the, the value just went completely upside down. And so bond market's huge. That's on Netflix, so you can go see it on Netflix. But uh, if you're into some you know type of finance movie, it's very confusing. You probably have to play it two or three times to really grasp the understanding of it. A lot of financial terms, but, but very, very true to the industry. So um, <clears throat> that, was, that was a good movie. But uh, we'll talk about stock investing towards the end. I want to kind of give you a little couple tips and tricks about, about investing. So uh, the first one I want to show here is our, our GBiz5 class. Um, our GBiz5 class right here, what we have is is our, um, our schedule. And you could see right here, we're doing this week. We're doing, we're right here, we're on this week. And remember, um, I told you all in class last week that uh, May 18th, so this Thursday right here, this one, and I'll highlight it for you. This chapter 16 Thursday right here, I'm not going to be here. Uh, I have a, another commitment on campus that I have to attend. So um, that that was addressed to you. You don't have to come and sign anything. I already got it. And, I'll, I'll, um, and I'm, I'm making sure that I'm not taking roll that day. So uh, use that time wisely uh, for GBiz5. Use that time wisely. We all have that time off no matter what. And so I would suggest, and that's why I suggested last week that you, that your groups, you know, rented rooms in the library so that you at least had a place to, uh, to do your stuff, right? That you at least had a place to um, run over your presentation and do anything like that. I had my office hours on, on Friday and I had a group come in and, and we really talked about stuff. We really did, we really did some good stuff. So uh, make sure, you know, if you have any questions, come see me, but I can't help you if it's going to be like the one day before the presentation and then all of a sudden everybody has all these problems, right? You got to come to me even right now is a little too late, but it's still before the time, you know? So, um, we're going to be doing chapter 15, uh, which is about finance as well. It's about, uh, um, balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, and we're going to analyze uh, a company or two using those statements of cash flow. And then for chapter 16, I'm probably going to do like an online lecture. I'm going to post sometime um, between now and the final exam. So you could go and look at chapter 16 uh, because uh, it, it, it's good information on how to raise capital. So that's what we're doing for that class. And we have our projects due, our presentations are due. So remember, even if you're presenting on like June 1st or week 16, right? If you're presenting right here, your project is still due on this day right here. Your project is still due on the, on the 15th. And so, um, or on, on, in week 15. So make sure, you know, you're, you're getting everything spell checked, everything grammar proofed, and it's submitted all online, right? All online. And so we'll have, uh, we have three full weeks of school left. And then we have our final exam and it's going to come down to the, it's, you know, it's going to come down real fast. It's going to be really, really fast, but uh, make sure we're, we're, we're together with that. And so that's our introduction to business class. No other grades are due except for the two presentation grades and the evaluation final exam at the end of the year. So that's our uh, GBiz, GBiz 5 class. Let's look at our personal finance in class. So in class, again, same thing. Um, I'm not going to be here on Thursday, May 18th for those classes, LAC and PCC. So we won't be there for those classes. But you can see here, I already, I'm already a little bit ahead. It says chapter 14 and 15 are gonna be due tomorrow. Well, we're kind of starting chapter 15 tomorrow, the way that we're gonna be doing the lecture. Even though some parts are still in chapter 14, we're really starting chapter 15 tomorrow. So we should finish chapter 15 by tomorrow. 
so that we're all caught up the rest of the week. So I think we'll be good. And then again, 15, week 15, week 16, and then we have our final exam and evaluation. Evaluation will be distributed through Top Hat. Um, I'll probably open it up the Thursday right after on June 1st, and then you'll have until June 6th to complete it all on your Top Hat from home. So um, no having to fill it out and submitting a file and everything like that. It'll be all on Top Hat. So uh, that should be good. That should be uh, done real well. <coughs> and so um, that's our uh, personal finance, and we're coming down to the end with that. And also, I'm teaching that class. I'm teaching uh, personal finance online uh, during the summer. So if you know anybody that wants to take personal finance online, both classes are filled. They're, they're, they are completely filled for the first session. But it's an online class, and it, I will take people off the permission numbers if they want to add. So if you know anybody that wants personal finance, three units, transferable, counts towards your CSU grad points. So uh, make sure that we're doing that. So uh, that's there. Uh, no other classes I'm teaching during the summer, uh, but in the fall semester, uh, we got it. We got a good look. We got a good, we got a good little schedule, and maybe I'll you know towards the end of the year, maybe on my last uh, live stream for the uh, for the for the year, um, I'll put out my 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 class schedule and everything, and show you exactly what we're doing. So if you want to take other classes, if you want to take intro to business, if you want to take personal finance, if you want to take social media, um, it's all there. And then lastly, the uh, social media class. This is just a rough outline of what we're going to be doing. If you're in my social media class, this is just a rough little outline. We're probably not going to stick to it 100%, but that's why we said the schedule's tentative. So for my night class, my Wednesday's class, you know, this uh, this uh, May, this Wednesday, we're going to be doing YouTube presentations. That, uh, excuse me. We're going to be doing YouTube presentations and then Instagram. And then uh, May 24th, we're going to be doing Snapchat, probably some final exam prep. I know on May 31st, we're going to take our final exam. So with the, the, the multiple choice, the true and false, the matching, that type of final exam. And then the rest of the class period, you'll be dedicated to working on your website for the final project. And then your final presentation is there. And we're going to be doing our final presentations all day in class on that June 7th. So once you're done with your presentations, everybody wraps up you know, end of the semester. So uh, that's what we're doing with our Wednesday night social media. Tuesday, Thursday class, it's a little bit differently. Um, we already did YouTube, so we're a little bit ahead of the schedule um, as far as compared to the other class. So Snapchat is tomorrow. I'm doing a lecture on Snapchat. Miss Madunery is doing a lecture on Instagram on Thursday. Um, and again, I won't be at that class. I have another commitment. And then uh, May 23rd, or May 25th, that's why I put the little question mark. We're gonna have a guest speaker, one of those one of those two days, we're still working on it. And then that whole week of May 30th through the 1st is gonna be working on your website, dedicating coming in and working on that website, making sure that everything is, is up to par. And then your your last day, uh, oh, and then your test on the second, on that Thursday before the, on that Tuesday, that Thursday before the weekend we'll take our test our final exam test that way everything you have all the points in the system up until your website so going into that website presentation you'll know what you need to get on that thing to get a certain grade in the class so um, our goal is so by June June 1st you know we'll have the test submitted in there or that weekend so by like June June 3rd June 4th you'll, you'll know exactly what your grade is and what you need to get on the website and the website presentation to get everything um, everything ends everything squared away so uh, that's what we're doing with our social media class um, the social media class you know the people that are in the Wednesday night class you guys got some stiff competition because Tuesday's YouTube channels they're pretty good um, they, they were pretty good some of the commercials were better than real commercials they have real editing skills and everything so take some time and effort um, I know for both of my classes but more so the PCC class you know, you guys were really antsy to get on social media. It was all about, hey, we got to do content creation and why are we doing content creation and all this type of stuff. And now we're doing content creation and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so much work. This is so hard and stuff like that. So it's not easy. Just because it's free, it's not easy, right? Um, social media is a hard thing to do. But uh, that's, the, that's the schedule for the rest of the semester, basically. Uh, coming down to the 
and you know I'll probably you know start doing maybe review sessions maybe the last couple weeks of uh, of the live streaming so maybe so maybe starting not next week but the week after I may just do my half hour on just uh, reviews for final exams and, and stuff like that so that you have something prepared you have something that you can go back to and uh, re-watch before your final exams and so that'll be for the online class my in class face to face all that type of stuff but uh um that's what we're doing that that that's the route that's the route that we're taking in this class but um before we move on uh to a little bit of investing stuff any questions any questions out there from anybody All right, so let's do a little investing stuff. So my brother and I were talking this weekend and my brother my brother likes to invest money and he likes to, um, he likes to look at the stock market and invest in corporations and we're looking at it and going, okay, how do you choose which stocks to go into, right? How do you choose which stocks to go into? How do you choose which investments that you actually wanna run? And so we were talking about, you know, and this is, you know, financial nerd talk, you know, we're talking about, a, um, you know, analysis and statistics and standard deviations and looking at, you know, prospectus and, and running the financial analysis, you know, because if you're a finance major, you could major in, you know, valuation and see how much a company is worth. And that's how you bet on whether you want to buy, sell or, or stay with the stock. And then we started thinking, we both, we both came to the realization that, you know, companies all over the world they have all the resources in the world they have a lot of talent that they can pull from you know these are the best and the brightest the ones that work at all these like high-end uh, financial firms right they're the best and the brightest in their class they got gpas they got interviews they got everything like that and then still they could be wrong on a lot of stuff right i mean a lot of stuff and so um we started thinking about it we started thinking well if they're doing their analysis and they're not even getting this stuff, there's something there that's not, that can't be accounted for, right? And we realize it's that intangible asset that somebody has, which is meaning with stats, you can look at it, you can verify, you can say, okay, those are the real numbers, let's let's go with that. And then something completely different because of, something completely different happens because of natural disaster, emergency, shift in policy with government, um, and other stuff but ultimately it came down to we kind of both looked at it and said well how do we kind of look at at investment stuff and we really both look at the ceo of the company we see that a ceo has persuasion they have leadership skills they have managerial skills and this is why it's so important when companies do hire ceos to say okay what type of ceo are they what type of person are they because it really affects the stock price and if you think about it think about somebody like mark zuckerberg right um, if you just know the person, you could kind of tell that like Facebook isn't going anywhere anytime soon. For a long time, people thought it was going to die out. Um, all these new apps are coming up, but Facebook reasserted itself and made itself dominant. And so a lot of that has to go with Mark Zuckerberg, whether you like him or not, he's effective in that manner. He's effective in, in pushing the envelope and constantly evolving with a product and making something new. I mean, Facebook Live is huge, right? Yes, it comes with problems. Yes, they have they have you know biases, issues, and stuff like that. But in the end, the entire you know apparatus of Facebook really depends on Mark Zuckerberg. If you look at the if you look at Apple, and you and you see and you see Apple's value and stuff like that. I mean, yes, it's super high, but at the same time, I mean, Steve Jobs is 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 irremovable, right? You you have to have a guy like Jobs out there. And so really the CEOs, the, the leadership team behind of a company may have more of a say. Maybe you can't prove it necessarily, but they do have more of a say than maybe financial analysis numbers to say, listen, you know, I bet against the odds. Like I know this person, I know what they do. I know their MO. And so um, you gotta think about that before investing. What companies are you actually going into business with, right? I mean, if you're own, when you own a stock, you are owning a company. So what business are you going in with? And so that's one of the first things we were talking about. Well, the second thing that, that we were talking about 
was um, when when to invest, right? You always hear, oh man, the stock market's good right now. Well, if the stock market's good right now, that means you know price per shares are high. And for the person trying to get into the game, it's a, it's a lot of money, right? I mean, when you're when you're looking at a Apple or, or Facebook trading at 160 something dollars a share, or 150 dollars a share, or whatever, um, and you buy you know 10 shares, you know that that's a lot of money. You know, that's 1,600 bucks. Now think about if you're buying in the lot of 100, right? Round lot of 100. It's a lot of money, and so. Some people always ask me in, in my classes and stuff is like, Mr. C, when should I invest? Like, when should I start doing it? And number one, that's why we do chapter four, three, which is time value of money in the very beginning. So you can kind of answer that yourself. You can say, well, if I start investing money now, it'll grow faster, it'll grow stronger, and it'll have more time to grow, so therefore I can make more money. That's, that's one logical explanation for it, right? There's the other explanation that's probably more practical, but you may not want to hear it because of the fact that it takes discipline, it takes time. So for instance, and I tell my in-class this one all the time, is that average credit card rate in America right now is about 12%, 10, 11, 12%. Well, we we did a we did we showed an article last last class session on stocks, and since the time of the modern era, since 1928, Great Depression, all the way to 2015, and I mentioned this earlier in the in the in the stream. It's 20 you know 20 uh, 11 11 point eight percent growth or something like that 11 percent growth. So if your average credit card debt is 12% and the average growth on the stock market is 11%, right? Yeah, you may be above it, yeah, you may be below it, but average, averaged out, it's 11%. Every time you invest, you're actually losing money because you're paying it out still 12% over to the debt. So think about it. You have to understand how much the cost of financing is. That time value money works both ways, right? It works both ways. When you're trying to earn money, it's a great thing. You want that interest rate to be high. When you're trying to owe money, you want that interest rate to be very, very low. And so when you're thinking about investing, that's why we do it at the very end of the chapter, at the end of the book, because it should be the thing that you do on top of the stuff. Now, am I talking about 401k? No, this is a totally different thing than a 401k or an IRA. However, I mean, if you want to get rid of your debt faster, I would definitely, you know, halt all funds until all your debt is paid off and then you can invest more. Yes, it may take a little while, but, and you may say, but Mr. C, the time value of money, I can have so much money in, in two or three years by the time I pay off my debt. Yeah, but that debt is still piling up as well, right? Um, it may be a fixed or a variable rate. If it's a variable rate, you're, you're, you could pay something off and then the next statement, it'd actually be more because all you paid off was the minimum. So you want to look at that financing options. You want to look at the cost of financing. You want to look at the cost of uh, investment. And so when, when you're looking at all those types of things, really take into the account, what do I owe? Because if it's just a credit card, okay, you could, you could pay off your credit card super easy. That may be 12, 13%. But it's probably not just a credit card. You probably have a credit card. You probably have a car loan. You probably have a home loan. You probably have some school loans. You probably have a loan out there outstanding. You know, you got you have to pay off some. You you bought a computer on credit from from like a Best Buy or something like that. You got to pay them back. You got multiple credit cards out there. You got multiple loans out there. So your best bet would probably be to just pay off all the debt first. Just halt everything right and start paying off with the lowest amount right lowest amount I, I categorize my debt on a spreadsheet um, my school loans that's the only debt we have uh, I categorize I categorize by who the provider is I categorize it by how much is my balance how much is my monthly payment on that one and I look at all these different things um, how much is the interest rate is key right uh, and I go okay which one has the highest interest rate at the lowest you know balance 
Some people say, well, you know what? The smarter thing to do is invest at the high balance and chip it away, chip it away, chip it away. Yeah, but you need momentum, right? It's the it's what Dave Ramsey said. It's what Mike Cernovich has said. It's been what a lot of people that have dealt with money is, is they know what they're talking about as well. And so it gives you steam. It gives you momentum. It gives you a sense of, hey, I'm accomplishing something. If you have a $900 loan out there and you have the means to pay it off, pay it off, right? Pay it off just so that you have that sense of mind of, hey, I paid something off. And so just a, just a few little t- tips before we wrap everything up. Number one, uh, shoot, what was number one? Oh, one, look for a company that you're going to invest into, right? If you are going to play the stock market, know it's a zero-sum game. Know that there are other professionals out there that do this for a living and you're not. So just remember that before you go in. Maybe that's why you may want a financial advisor or, or a stockbroker to actually do your stuff. Um, but look at the company, right? The company is key because no matter what every analysis says or every person out there, your, your company is the one that's serving the customers, right? You have to look at that company. Number two, um, stop all investing until you've actually paid off most of your debt, right? Most of your debt so that you actually could put more money into that investment and have it grow faster, right? That time value of money aspect states that you can um that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow meaning you could put money in a bank today come back in 10 years and have more money than somebody who just took that same amount put it under put it under their mattress right you could have that same effect and so um you get more of an effect however however people always say yeah but if i stop all investment then i won't have enough in my retirement by the time i retire no you will because think about how much you pay in debt each month and then think about okay, what can I do with that extra money? Let's say you let's say your monthly debt payment. You have a car, you have school loans. We won't count home loan because it's a different type. It's an equity loan and stuff. But let's say you have, you know, twenty five hundred a month in 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 debt each month, right? You have some loan statements. You have some credit cards. You have some cars. You have twenty five hundred dollars a month just in debt alone. Right, and that's a lot. Um, but you're also investing in, in stocks at the same time. Wouldn't make any sense. Put that money that you would invest in, put it all into the debt. That way when you have the debt all paid off, now you have 25 extra hundred dollars to work with. Now with time value of money, don't you think that could actually speed the process up, speed the pace up? So just a couple things to think about. We have that and then um, and then yeah, paying up paying off the debt. So um with that you know we're running out of time any questions before we before i close this up before i close shop up well if you do have questions you know you know where to find me email tweet website nickcarbonar.com other than that um have a great oh we just got one person at the very end sorry we're actually closing the, the live stream up the person that just got added to the live stream however um so again, to just let me just wrap this up. Minute, minute left. No class this Thursday for my in class. Um, no class coming up on May 29th is Memorial Day, so I won't be doing a live stream on May 29th. Uh, so I may do one that Friday instead. That Friday before finals, I'll probably do a live stream then. So no live stream on May 29th. Um, but yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing our, we're doing our, uh, presentations in a week. We're finishing up our books this week for GBiz 5. We're, uh, continuing with investment strategies in, in the GBiz 10 and social media. We're wrapping things up. We're working on our websites. We're doing Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube presentations. We're doing a lot of stuff. So, um, other than that, you could find me, you know, and Carbonaro at lbcc.edu, nickcarbonaro.com at NJ on Twitter, or you could just, you know, old school status, you know, you could dial me on the phone, right? Uh, I'm in my office right now. So I will be here for another hour. If you have any questions, let me know. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day.